song. Since I laid my burden down, how do we lay our burden down? Give it to the Lord. 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 Give it to the
God, for bringing us to this point. And not even thinking about leaving us, Lord. We just come to say thank you this morning. I thank you for the journey that I've been on, Father God. It's been a long journey. But it hasn't been a lonesome journey, Lord. Because I've had you all the way on this journey, Father God. And I just want to say thank you, Father God, for just being so good and kind. You woke me up this morning, Father God, and you're pleasing the Lord. You put raiment on my back, Father God, and you put shelter over my head, Father God, and you just continue to bless me and my family. And I just come this morning to just say thank you, God. Thank you for this journey. I've been on for a long, long time. Amen. And I'm asking you, Father God, to keep me. Keep me on this journey, Father God. Order my steps, Father God, as I go through this land, Father God. Not knowing where I'm going, except just to follow you, Lord. I thank you for leading me, Father God. Amen. I thank you for bringing me, Father God. I thank you for keeping me, Father God. And I just want to say thank you this morning, Father God. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the one that's here this morning, Father God. Thank you for the one that's not here this morning, Father God. Thank you for the one that's wanted to be here and couldn't be here, Lord God. We just in a, in a world of sad, I am in the world of sad. Thank you, Lord, for just being so good and kind. It's been good for me, Father God. Amen. And I ask you, Father God, to prepare ourselves. The children to get ready to go to school, Father God. And we ask, I'm asking you, Father God, to take care of our little ones. I call them our little darling, Father God. And I ask you, Father God, to just keep them, Father God. Don't let her home or neighbor come up on them and prepare them to go back to be school, Father God. Because our adults are acting more like children, Father God. And I'm asking you to touch their hearts and their minds, Father God. And don't let them harm any of your children, Father God. There's so much going on. Every time they turn around, every time we turn around, Father God, there's somebody doing harm. Amen. I'm thanking you this morning, Father God. I'm saying this, Father God, because I got some little ones. Everybody got some little ones. Uh, we ask that you protect them, Father God. And all this other mess that's going on out here in the world today, Father God, we know you got control of it, Father God. And whenever you get tired and fed up with it, you're going to put an end to it. Right? I just come this morning to say thank you. I got my hands in your hands, Father. Right? I plan to keep them. Let nothing distract me, Father God. Keeping my hands in your hands, Father God. Now, Lord, as we prepare to go into our service this morning, Father God, we ask that you, we're holding the one that's going to bring us up before you this morning, Father God. And I just want to say thank you, Father God. And as we prepare to go further into our service, give us another blessing, I ask for your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
know that Jesus will fix it. That, that's a promise, amen. Amen. Whatever you're going through, whatever life throws at you, man, I mean, Jesus, he will fix it, amen. So we have reason, amen, to have joy this morning, amen. We have reason to have peace this morning, amen. Because we know in our hearts that Jesus will fix it. He already had. He fixed it when he was on the cross. He fixed it when he was down on that cross. It was a sealed deal when he got up after three days with all power. Victory is ours because of what he did on that cross. Amen, amen. So you can say that song uh, with me. Just knowing. With assurance, amen. Assurance, yes, Lord. That God is in control. God is in control. Amen, amen. Yeah, say the number on. You don't own nothing around here. God has got our back. Because we are his children. Amen. Amen. We are his children. Matter of fact, if you go to your Bible, I'm going to ask you to stand. If you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, All right. we're not going to be long today, amen, but amen. just a matter of fact, to, to know that we are his children, amen, All right. yes. it kind of reminds us of what it says here in 1 Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Y'all know we got revival this week, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I want to remind y'all. I, I want to see y'all faces here. Yes, sir. On revival this week. Yes, sir. Amen. Not one night, but every night. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses yeah, verses five through six. Yes. Yeah, there it is. And it says, "We know that God is going to fix it for us." Amen. <laughs> Because it says in verse 5, it says, Ye are all the children of light mm -hmm. yes. and the children of day. Mm -hmm. We are not of night nor darkness. Amen. Verse 6 says, Therefore, let us not sleep mm -hmm. as others do, mm -hmm. but let us watch and be sober. Amen. 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 And that's what we're going to talk about today. Watch and be sober. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. I, I want to remind y'all again about revival. <laughs> and I probably be reminding you throughout the, uh, the day, amen, because we, we, we need a revival, church. Amen. We need a revival. And we need to be and we need to be in fellowship. We talked about fellowship this morning in Sunday school. And we need fellowship. Amen. It's very important. If it wasn't important, God would have put it in, in, the, in our instructions, amen, for us to do it. Because we need to be fellowshipping one with the other. And it's really because of what these verses that we are before us today is saying. It says, ye are all children of the light. That's right. And children of the day. Yes. We are not of night nor darkness. Amen. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Yeah, we, we like to sleep. I could have stayed in this morning. <laughs> Physically, amen, I could have stayed in this morning and, and, and probably, I know I could have got me two more or three more hours in there. Amen. Yeah, right. <laughs> amen, amen. I could have got me two or three without without rolling over probably. Could have did it. Probably would have woke somebody up snoring. But I would have been asleep. <laughs> And uh, let me tell you a little bit of something about being asleep. Mm. That Y'all probably already know this, but I'm just going to let you know anyway. Yeah. That it can be both good and bad. Mm. All right. Sleep can be both good and bad. All right. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you. Now, God is not going to allow me to hold y'all too long today. Amen. Because of revival next week. Yes. But he want to see y'all, okay? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sleep is good. It's good for our bodies. Mm -hmm. When the body is tired, stressed, worn down, it, it sleep, you, your body needs rest. Yes. All right. 
And, 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 and what sleep does, it restores our strength. Uh -huh. It revitalizes us. It, it re-energizes. It helps to heal. You know, a lot of times when, you, when you've been injured, the doctor tells you you're going to get some rest. Yeah. You, need, yeah. you need to rest. You need, need to sleep. Yeah. Because when your body is lying down and uh, resting and sleeping, it's in a healing process. Yeah. It's healing at the same time. That's how God designed the body, right? So it, it helped to recover sore muscles. All right. But sleep can also be bad. All right. All right. And when we have already been restored, mm -hmm. when we've already been revitalized, strengthened, and you know, energized, re-energized, sleeping can have some bad effects on our bodies. Mm. Sleeping too much. Yeah, that's right. T-O-O, -O, too much. <laughs> <laughs> and I did some research on uh, how sleeping too much can be bad for us. And I found out that it causes a whole lot of, and some of your, your doctors and nurses know this already, but it can cause a whole lot of chronic diseases, such as coronary heart disease. Wow. It can cause diabetes. Sleeping too much. You understand? Yeah, sleeping too much can cause these things. Anxiety. It causes obesity. And I found out that sleeping too much put, a, put us at a greater risk than sleeping too little. Because when your body is inactive for too long, it ain't doing nothing. It's not, it's not burning off anything. That's right. That's right. It's, not being, it's not building up any strength. Mm -hmm. It's just laying there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and all these other things start attacking your body. Oh, wow. You understand? So we, we, we have to know when to get up <laughs> and when to get moving. Right. Right. When to watch and be sober. All right? All right. And I tell you what, sleep, sleep, I say it's good. There are some times when sleep is good. But sometimes it'd be worse than anything else in the world. Like I said, sleeping too much. I always thought with her, sleeping too little was worse, you know, you know, worse than you know, sleeping too much. But they, the way the doctors explain it to me, sleeping too much is worse. And sleeping too little. All right. Ain't that something? Yes, sir. Well, you know, sleeping too too much, too little, you know, uh, can cause strokes and things like that, amen. But they say sleeping too much can cause the same thing. Wow. But what God is talking about here when he says, Ye are the children of light and the children of day, we are not of night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. All right, all right. Now, he's talking about a spiritual sleep. All right, all right. Spiritually sleep, amen. amen. Can be the same, it can have the same or uh, worse effects on us, amen, if, we, if we're sleeping too much. Really, we don't need to be sleeping at all spiritually. We need to be watching and we need to be sober. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need to be, you know, uh, you know, sleeping yes. when a sermon is going on. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Amen? Sleeping when a sermon, a life-saving sermon is going on in your presence. Amen? That, that's, that's bad sleeping. Amen? That's too much sleep. Yes. Ain't that right? Amen. Let me tell you something else. Sleeping when you're on the job. Mm. Got other folks' lives at stake. I'm just talking about some sleeping now, amen. Right. That's bad business, ain't that right? Amen. Amen. You can cost you your hand or your, uh, somebody their head or anything. It could cause a life. Right. Sleeping is bad when you're operating a vehicle. Amen. And y'all, this is going to blow your mind right here. Sleeping is bad also when you're flying an airplane. Right. <laughs> and I found out that most of our pilots, when we are up there, you know, <laughs> When we sleep up there in the sky, they sleep too. <laughs> amen. They will sleep too. Amen. Amen. And the reason we know that some of them was honest. 
They took 500 pallets and 56% of them admitted to falling asleep while flying. But check this out. Another 29% of those, they said when they woke up, their co-pilot was asleep. <laughs> so everybody was asleep on the plane. You understand? But see, just imagine if we sleep like this spiritually. Amen. You understand? When, when we sleep like this spiritually, uh, Satan started creeping in. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. He started coming in places that he thought you had a guard around. You know what I'm saying? He started finding cracks and crevices in your life. Amen. Where he'll sneak on in there. He'll, he'll start taking your attention from, from God. Yes, he does. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, when, when you're spiritually yes. asleep. Yes. Help us, God. Which is more deadly than physically yes. sleep. Yes, it is. Because when you're spiritually asleep, that, that's, that's your soul that's yes. staying. That's your spirit, amen. It, but when, you, when you're physically asleep, that's just your body. Mm. My God. These are going to pass away one day anyway. Yes, right. But your spirit is going to live forever somewhere. somewhere. Either in heaven or in hell. It won't be no in-between cool place. And if they, I tell my wife the other day, I mean, I, I really not a fan of summer. But it reminds me of where I don't want to be. You understand what I'm saying? I can't hardly stay in this heat. Which is nothing compared. Nothing compared. This is air conditioning. <laughs> Amen. But it reminds me that I need to be spiritual, spiritually awake at all times. I need to be sober at all times. Help me, God. Yes. Because I want to go to heaven. Yes. Amen. Yes, God. Where my father is. Amen. Amen. Now, what Paul is telling us here is to watch and be sober. Watch for the coming of the Lord. That's what he's saying. Y'all know he's coming back, right? Talking to my, talking to the children of the light. Amen. Yes, he is. He is coming back. You do believe that, right? He did say he was going to come back, y'all. Yes, he did. And he has never lied to us. All right. And Paul is conveying the message to the children of God that it is critical that we remain alert while we wait mm -hmm. on the Lord. Yes. We got to remain alert. Mm -hmm. There's so much trying to take our attention off God today. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, look around you. I mean, look at the spaces there. Mm -hmm. Some people's attention have, have, have drifted off. Not fellowshipping. We're talking about fellowshipping this morning. That's right. That's right. Not coming to church. That's right. Not checking in with folks. Yes. Not heeding to the word of God. Yes, it's kind of like being in a comatose state. Mm -hmm. My God. You know, there are different levels of com uh, uh, comas, right? Yes. You know, you have that, 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 that first level where you kind of just sleep. Some of, them, some of that first day, sometimes they put you in the coma. Mm. To heal. Yes, <laughs> you understand? Yes, that's right. To heal. That's right, man. And sometimes you're in, a, you're in that state where you're kind of meeting them, uh, in there a little deeper. They expect you to wake up probably in a few days, maybe. Mm. And then there's another state where you may be asleep for like a, a month. Mm. You know, you're in a bad shape. Mm. And then there are some cases when you're in a deep sleep. He may be asleep for years. Mm -hmm. And sad to say, church, a great percentage of our church, mm -hmm. I'm talking about not just Mount Moriah, I'm talking about the church. Yeah. I'm talking about all of our sisters and brothers. Yeah. We're in a deep state yeah. of comatose right now. Yeah. It's yeah. sad, but it's true. It's true. It's true. I was in a pretty good sized church yesterday in Atlanta. When we was uh, criminalizing uh, Brother Gervis. And I looked around, it was, well, it was probably about 75 deacons that was there. And I think it was two churches combined, but they all came together. But in all, it was like 75, at least 75, I would say, deacons. Wow. And within those 75 deacons, I don't think no one. Maybe, maybe one was under 60 years old. Wow. Wow. 
Most of us was in their 60s, 70s, and 80s in our own way. Wow. Wow. And that let me know right there that this message is on time. Mm. Amen. Amen. Because we're living in a world in a time when our young people are not coming to church. They're not. They're not coming. Glory to God. As I looked around the Sunday school class this morning, I looked around the Sunday school class this morning, and as I looked somebody out in the Sunday school, all I seen was teachers. I said, "Man, Mount Moriah has so many wonderful teachers here this morning, but we don't have anybody to teach to but ourselves." I think it was about nine or ten of us. I don't know if somebody took the count, take the count this morning. It was about nine or ten, but. All of the teachers. The teachers need to be talked to. That's right. That's right. Don't get me wrong. That's right. But we have some young people that need to be talked to more. Yes, amen. Help us, Lord. Help us, God. We got some babies, amen, that's coming up. Yes, God. Help us. Some of them want to be deacons one day. Yes. Some of them want to be ushers one day. Yes, God. Choir members, choir directors, amen. Drummers, amen. But we got to wake up. We got to wake up. We got to wake up and bring them to church. Amen. We got to wake up. There's a danger in being asleep. Amen. Yeah. Jesus is on his way back. I know we've heard that for thousands of years now. <laughs> But that let us know we're getting closer and closer to that time. <laughs> Amen. And what Paul is saying that, you know, it's, it's, he conveyed this message that it's critical time right now. That we remain alert as we live this Christian life during these last days. Paul is saying, watch and be sober. Christ is on his way back. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, we're almost done. Mm -hmm. But this is a message that, that we got to hear before we leave here. Amen. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. Verse 16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a what? Shout. Shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Nobody. Go to 17. Mm -hmm. Then we which are alive mm -hmm. and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds mm -hmm. to meet the Lord in the air. Mm -hmm. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. But in order to be with the Lord, the last part say, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. In order for us to be with the Lord, we're going to have to be watchful and we're going to have to be so. Amen. Amen. We got to watch and wait for his return. We got to make sure that the devil don't creep in into our lives. Amen. Amen. We got to be willing. We got to be ready at all times. Now, now, the Bible did tell us that we, no man knows the day nor the hour. Don't nobody know. Jesus said he didn't even know. Only God knows when he's going to come back. But while we're waiting, you know, really, and we're going to talk about this, but, you know, uh, a thief coming tonight, right? That's right. Yes. <laughs> That's what it said. A thief, he don't announce when he's going to come. That's right. But a thief won't be able to sneak up. I'm talking about. The devil won't be able to sneak up on a Christian mm -hmm. who is watching and waiting. Mm -hmm. You understand? Come on now. So we got to be alert at all times. So, and, and, uh, and this is one way to do it. You know, the big question is, like I said, when is this going to happen? A lot of people say, when is this going to happen? You've been talking about this forever. Is, is it going to come today or tomorrow? I don't know when it's going to come. Over in Matthew chapter 24, Verse 36. I'm sure Paul had told the Thessalonians this. And they probably had read it themselves. It says in 36, it says, however, no one know the day, and it's Jesus talking. Mm -hmm. 
No one know the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven. Or the son himself. Only the father knows. Amen. 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 What about Matthew chapter 24 verse 42? Okay. Look at it. Say, so you too must keep watch. This is what Jesus is saying, y'all. Right. Jesus is telling us this. This ain't our will. This is not even Paul. This is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on now. He said, you too must keep watch. Uh -huh. For you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Amen. All right. All right. But we do know he's coming. Amen. 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 And that, that really put a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. With all the things that's going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that he's coming back. Amen. But I don't want him to go without, I don't want him to come without Judah, amen, All right. going with it. All right, man. Amen. I don't want him to come back, amen, without little Jacks over there yes. going with it, amen. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So we had to watch over our families. Mm -hmm. We had to watch over our loved ones, yeah. amen. Come on. Some of them not ready to receive it yet, but we got to lead them the way too. Come on now. You understand? We got to lead them. We got to be the leaders. Yeah. If you don't believe these children are watching you, <laughs> you better think again about that one. They don't, they don't walk and talk like you just because. <laughs> Amen. They, they walk and talk like you because they want to be like you. You understand? They want, they want to be just like you. So whatever you doing, they're going to do. Come on, Pastor. That's why we have to be watching. Mm. Look over our own life. And, and, you know, we, we, we spend too much time looking at other folks' lives. Oh, and a lot of times we do it, Brother Jack, we do it on Facebook. Mm. <laughs> we spend a whole lot of time on Facebook looking at other folks' lives. That's right. That's right. And a lot of those folks are not living that life that That's you see right. on That's Facebook. Right. Amen. Facebook is just another Hollywood. Amen. Amen. Just, if you really meet some of those folks, they're not living like that. <laughs> Jack said they don't even look like that. <laughs> That's right, they got all these filters now, amen. Make you look all kind of good, good looking, amen. Some of us be in a shock, amen. We see the real side of these folks. Amen. So be careful. Be watchful, amen. What we watch. And be careful and watch for what your children watch. That's right. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Because I know for a fact that every woman is not a man. Mm. Or every woman is not a woman. That's right. mm. Every man is not a man when you look on there. Amen. 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 That's true. And I remember some years ago, this is not just going on, Trey, but I remember some years, it's just getting a little bit worse now because we have so much, we have easy access and stuff now. Right. But I remember some years ago when I went to uh, Las Vegas, and some of y'all went with us. But some of the men, and we went to uh, uh, one of those buffets. I remember. The... <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you remember those? I remember yeah. What yeah, and we seen these two men, well, two people, <laughs> walking, hey, man. And one of them had some kind of hefty arms. Then one of the seasoned men that was in our group, we thought they was nice looking women. He said, he said nah, uh, uh, look at that neck. <laughs> look, look at them legs. <laughs> Everything ain't what it seems to be. Oh my God. Oh my God. Amen? Amen. And you see, Jackie had to be a young man. He, he had to be a, almost a baby when he said that. But he remembered that. So we have to be careful. We got to be watchful on what we see, what we do, where we go, and how we act around our children. Amen. Amen. Christ is on his way back. Yes, he is. That's why Jesus says, so you too must keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. All right. So what Paul is echoing from Jesus is to watch and to stay alert at all times. At all times. Don't right. go asleep. Amen. That's right. It's time for us to wake up, church. Come on now. Come it's on time now. for us to have a revival around here. Come on now. 
It's time for us to be revived and re energized. But we have been asleep long enough. It's time to wake up. It's time to go out, amen, for these walls and bring some folks in here to teach to, to preach to. It's time to get up. Today is the day of salvation. That's what he's talking about. No better day than today. Today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Help us, Lord. Help us. And Paul is just echoing what Jesus is saying, and I'm echoing what both of them are saying today. Amen. Yes, sir. Well, it's going to be a real catastrophe for those, amen, who are asleep mm. when he come back. My Lord. Yeah. If you sleep when he come back, then it's really just too late. Mm. Okay. Amen. <clears throat> because when you're asleep, that means you're not listening to God. You're not adhering to God's word. Amen. You're not adhering to his will or his way. To be asleep means that you are an unbeliever. Mm -hmm. wow. Doing your own thing. Living your own life. Oh my God. Doing things that's not acceptable of God. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Go to Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. 43 and 44. I'm going to read the NLT. This is what Jesus says. I like, I like saying what he said. He said, understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. Y'all know that's true, right? That's true. Go to that next verse there, brother. He said, you also must be ready all the time for the Son of Man will come when least Yes. So what, what Jesus is saying is what I said to you a while ago. He's already telling them he's going to come. Mm -hmm. When those who are asleep uh -huh. are not expecting right. But we are not asleep. Right. Y'all understand? We are not asleep, church. We know that he's coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's why he said that we, we, we got to be ready at all times. We got to be ready at all times because we are not the children of darkness. We are not the children of night. But we are children of light. And we are children of day. Amen. Come on now. So the stage is already being set for his return. Just look around. Look at all the signs, amen, that he's given us over the years. Amen. We see event after event unfold. Yes, right. Right before us today. Yes, we do. That is coming back one day. So he's yes. telling us to be watchful and be sober. Yes. And the danger of being asleep. Woo-wee. Spiritually asleep. Yes. First Thessalonians 5, 3 and 7. Mm -hmm. The danger of being asleep. Mm -hmm. What did it say, church? When people are saying mm -hmm. everything is peaceful and secure, mm -hmm. then disaster will fall upon them suddenly as the pregnant woman's labor pains again. And there will be no escape. That's powerful right there. Amen. And y'all know what? You know, I didn't think about this, but you know, uh, uh, when, I, when I read that verse, when you ask a woman, they know about the time that they're going to deliver the baby. But they really don't know the exact time. Is that right? That's they right. really don't know the exact time. That's right. You know, especially if it's going to be a natural birth. Mm -hmm. So they, they'll give you a roundabout time, you know. Well, it's going to be next week sometime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe next week. Yeah. And so that's what he's talking about. Go to the next verse there. Mm -hmm. But you are, aren't in yeah. the dark about these things. He's talking about us. Right. We ain't in the dark about it. Come on now. He said, but you ain't in the dark about these things, mm -hmm. dear brothers and sisters. And you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. that surprise, it won't be for us. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be surprised. Mm -hmm. The children of the light, God's children, mm -hmm. the ones who Jesus died for, yes. we won't be surprised when he come back. Right. Right. Yeah. He said, we won't. That's what the word says. He said, you are not, you are not in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because you are believing the word of God. All right. Amen. 
Because you are awake during this sermon. Yes. Amen. You're not asleep. Amen. Mm. Go to the next one there, brother. Mm. It says, for you are all children of the light mm -hmm. and of the day. Yes. We don't belong to darkness and night. Yeah. Darkness and night. That's sin, church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So be on your guard. Yeah. Not asleep like the others. The others are the children of darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Stay alert and be clear headed. Come on now. Stay alert and be sober. Mm. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Go to the next. I like this. <laughs> it's a night is the time when people sleep mm -hmm. and drinkers get drunk. Come on now. Come on. Y'all yes. sleep. <laughs> night is the time when people are asleep. Amen. And, and uh, drunk people get drunk. <laughs> Amen. Drinkers get drunk. <laughs> but light and darkness in the Bible are used as contrasting metaphors. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, day, and, day and light means that means uh, holiness. That means uh, you know, being blessed. Good and evil. Amen. Knowledge and ignorance. That's what, that's what these things contrast. I'm talking about night and day. Truth and falsehood. But Paul uses the light and darkness. He, he, he uses the contrast between believers and unbelievers. You understand? Since we are believers, he's talking to us today that we won't be surprised because we're going to be woke and we're going we're gonna to be alert and we're going to be sober. Amen? Amen. We're going to be clear-minded. The ones called brethren are not in darkness. The one called brethren are not asleep. The one who's called brethren, amen, are awake and sober. And if a person is found spiritually asleep when Christ returns, that means that they are unsaved. And there's some danger in being unsaved. Some who say that they are Christians are spiritually asleep today. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true. That's true. Some people say they are Christians, amen. They're not doing what God wants them to do. Mm -hmm. It don't even affect them, amen, when they do wrong. Mm -hmm. they, don't feel, they, they don't feel bad when they do wrong. Mm -hmm. They feel good when they do wrong. Mm -hmm. I told them, mm -hmm. I did this, this, yeah, he should have did this to me. You ought, you ought to feel bad about that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about revenge. How many guys got revenge before? I think you did. Mm, Y'all yes. <laughs> ain't got to raise our hand. But I could raise both of mine. Yeah. But every time I did it, God came and gave me a whooping. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm glad for it. All right. Because it, it, it taught me something. Right. It'll teach you something too that he don't play. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It teaches me that I need to love my enemy too. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So I'm glad that God corrects me. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit convicts me. Yes. And you ought to be too. Children of the light, they're glad when these things happen. Yes. Yes. Because then they can go to God and repent for what the sins that they have done. Yes, yes God. And that's what you call being prepared when they come back. Yes. Yes. You understand? He yes. says stay alert, stay, stay woke. And you can't do that without being on your knees. Yes. You got to pray. And you got to pray every day and throughout the day. You got you to go down on the knees. If you want to stay alert, stay awake, be a sober mind, you got to talk to God. You want to stay sober, be alert, you got to come to church. You got to fellowship with one another. You got to rub up against somebody. You may have to confide in some folks. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you to the right one. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Because you're going to be, you be down on the knees. He's going to you, get, lead and guide you. If you trust him. Being spiritually asleep is dangerous. Especially if Christ comes and you're still asleep. Some, like I said, some people are in a spiritual coma right now. Sad to say, amen. Mm -hmm. Lost consciousness to what God has said. Mm -hmm. They don't feel, they feel like everything is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. In spite of our doing wrong, amen. And these wrong decisions. 
You're in a comatose state when you're not aware of the danger, amen, that, that you are in, amen, when you do these things. Going against God's will. Not responding to God's word. You're in a comatose state when you're not growing in Christ. When you're inactive, amen, don't participate. Not fellowship. You're in a comatose state. When you're not fellowshipping, amen. When you're in, a, in that reclusive state, don't want to be around nobody. Go to Hebrews 7. This is going to be on the screen, I don't think. Hebrew. Let me get there, too. The sixth, sixth chapter. Verse 4 through 6. Let me tell you the, how dangerous it is. What the Bible say, not not our will, amen. But the Bible, what the Bible says, of being uh, uh, in a spiritually comatose state. Y'all there? Yes, sir. Okay. Verse four says, "For it is impossible to bring back repentance to those who were once enlightened." Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Jesus, God Almighty. Did y'all see that right? Yes. It's, he said it's impossible to bring back repentance to, to, to those who were once enlightened. He's talking about those who were who once proclaimed that Jesus was their Lord and Savior. Yes, yes. Those who are who have who have went to sleep, amen, and let the devil creep in and take them out mm. of fellowship. Amen. All right. But it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who are once enlightened, those who have, who have experienced the good things of heaven. All right. And share in the Holy Spirit. Come on now. <laughs> yes. Ooh then he goes on. The ones who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come. Come on now. And who then turn away from God. Yes. It is impossible to bring such people back to repentance by rejecting the son of God they themselves are nailing him to the cross once again. My God. And holding him up to the public shame. To public shame. Oh my God. That's powerful to me. Yeah. Amen. Mm. So that, that let us know the dangers. Amen. Of not being watchful and not being sober. Oh because this is what could happen. Sad but true. The Bible tells us it's impossible, amen, to bring those back who was once enlightened, who have rejected God. And by rejecting God, we nailing Jesus to the cross again. I mean, we, we, we killed him over again. Ain't that something? Sad but true. But I'm so glad today, church, that Jesus died for all of our sins. I'm so glad today, as bad as it was, that he was able to take yes. the, the whelps for us. Yes, sir. He was able to be crucified. He was able to be killed. He was able to be all those bad things that he did to us. Mm -hmm. he, was, he did it for us. So that we can be children of light and not of night. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. Yes. So that we can be children of light and day. Amen? Mm. He died on the cross for all of our sins. And I just thank God for that, thank for his son, amen, he did, who hadn't did anything. Thank you. But he said, I'm going to have to send somebody down because this sin is just outrageous. And I can't see sin. This is what God says. Mm. So you're going to have to go down mm. and die for this, for this sin sick world. And just like that, being obedient to his father, right. he did that. He allowed himself to be nailed to the cross. Yes. Stretched wide, amen. Yes. He allowed himself, amen, amen, to lie down in that grave for three days. Three days he, he was dead. But he believed in his father, God Almighty, to come in three days and raise him up with all power. 
And I just want to thank God for that. If I'm doing that. It's making me being watchful and sober. Amen. He didn't die in vain for Amen. our will. Amen. Amen. And I know that he didn't die in vain for you either. Amen. The door of the church is open. Amen. The Bible tells that there is only one way that we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that is through his son, Jesus Christ. The one who I just talked about who hung down that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour. Amen. And in that ninth hour, he gave up the ghost. Then they took him and put him in a bar or two where he stayed for three days. And then on that third day, he got up with all power. We got to believe that in our hearts and able to go to heaven where he is now preparing a place for us. Amen? Right now, he said he's, at, he's right there preparing a place for us. But we got to be watchful and we got to be sober, amen, for he is coming back. He said, I'm coming back. Yes. And he said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mm. It's there in the word, amen. The dead in Christ can rise first. Amen. I'm coming back for all those who believe in me. Mm. We see that there is none today. We've extended the privilege of the open door of the church. Your blood is not required by our hand. Amen. amen. God's word for God's people. Amen. amen.